Okay, calculus unit seven, day 64 notes, part three. This is on the calculator, just verifying the last six answers that we got from part two. So question A, and let me just set this up. So first off, um, actually, I'm going to do part D first, because then I can just tweak everything off of that. Um, so this is my F of X, which is Y1. This is my G of X, Y2. So once I have those two in there, um, I'm just going to come out here and let me clear this. So I'm going to do math choice nine and I'm going to go from, and I'm doing part D right now, zero to two. And what's my function? It is going to be Y1, which is vars, Y vars, function Y1 minus Y2, vars, Y vars, so I could have put both those in there, but I mean, you just got to pay attention to the sign and then DX. And for answer D, we got 9.978. And I got four. And let me make sure I am in mode radians, sine pi X. Oh, this is good. I did not square it. So let's go back, second quit. And when we make a mistake like this, let's go in second entry. So let's come in here and second insert, insert a parentheses there and put a parentheses there and square this. All right, this is good. Better make that mistake now. Okay, so answer D, because this is the difference between the, the two functions, which will be one side, which will represent one side of the square, and then the area of that square is uh, f of x minus g of x, so it's just the side squared, and then the dx um, represents the height of each little slice. So this is going to give you the volume, which should come out to be 9.978. There we go. All right, now I did it, I hit it enter twice. But now the nice thing is I can do, um, and I think I can take this answer, second answer, and multiply it by square root of 3 over 4 for my part A. This is why, like, A through D are all really the same thing, and even E and F. So when I multiply this by square root of 3, divided by 4, let me go back, so I gotta go back a few because I got to get my square root of 3, let me, oh, I didn't delete the divided by, square root of 3, all divided by 4 because I don't want them both under the radical, and you can close that parenthesis or not because I'm not going to go any further, so now um, when I hit enter, it should end up giving, and let me just do this, because sometimes I put a different parenthesis on there, because it was highlighted, so this should give me answer to A, 4.321, and it does. So all it did was this, with the square root of 3 over 4, up front, and now I can go back, and second entry, second entry, so here's my answer, and I think I can just, from here, do times... Um, for part B, I'm going to do pi over 8. So we don't have to always start from the beginning. The calculator allows you to do a lot of things. This should be 3.918. We like that. And then um, I'm going to do second entry. And I could have done that for up here. It would have made it easier for copying all these. So for answer C, it's just 1 half. So 1 divided by 2, and my answer should be 4.989. There you go, and now I can just keep copying this. Um, and the answer to E is just 2 times that, so I can just delete these two things. Delete, delete, and there's my times 2. And we should get 19.957. Good. And now I do second entry. And this is one third. One divided by three. 
Okay, and this will give me 3.326. Okay, so <clears throat> I think the process, obviously, if you do it by hand, you'd still be okay. You still you'd have to know how to do the antiderivative of anything you add. Um, but if it's a calculator-based problem, it's really just showing how how that sets up. Okay. Um, all right, that is good. Good work. Now we just got to prepare for the AP calculus test.